This is Johnny Nelson and you're watching Sporting Icons. So a common theme with many professional fighters in this particular era is, of course, they do come under a lot of criticism, especially on social media, where everybody who has a social media account makes them think that they have a God-given right to have an opinion on everything, to chastise, to troll, whatever it may be. Some of it is good criticism, some of it is supportive, okay? But everybody has an opinion. And the common theme with a lot of professional boxers as well, and it's not exclusive to boxing, most sports will have it, okay? Where some boxers, if they can't take the criticism or anything like that, and, and, and if they can't get the majority of people to agree with their opinion, they will target people and say, well, who are you to have an opinion on boxing? What's your background in boxing? Now, I responded to a professional boxer today, or I think he's actually, actually a former boxer now, but, and I like the guy. I don't have a problem with the guy, by the way. So, and he wasn't aiming anything at me. I just happened to see it, and I just responded to it. I don't need to name drop or anything, but if you want to find out who it is, just go to my Twitter account. Now, a lot of boxers will say, well, what's your background in boxing? What makes you a better boxing expert than me? I'm the one who has lived the life. I'm the one who's turned up to the gym. I'm the one who's done all the road work in the morning, the blood, the sweat, and the, um, and the tears, sacrificing, especially in the early days, not making too much money when we're having to balance um, my career, my passion of wanting to become a professional boxer with having to support a family and go through all that kind of thing, then go into fight night, potentially get hurt, knocked out, humiliated, all that kind of thing. So therefore... Who are you to criticise me as to who, what it is that I've done, what it is how I fight, who it is that I fight? Who are you to criticise me? Now, I understand that point, which is, for an example, if you used to bring a, an electrician or a plumber or a gas engineer to your house, you wouldn't sit there supervising and tell them how to do their job, would you? Of course not. You want, and hopefully, that to, you, know, you do actually um, employ some, a, a professional rather than just your mate from next door. Hopefully, right? So, and so in which case, I understand their point. But my point is from a so-called boxing expert, which I'm, I've never claimed to be so, which is I don't have to have lived a life of a boxer to make predictions, to give my thoughts on certain fights, to give my thoughts on certain situations. And me and probably most of you, we all going to have an opinion. We're boxing fans. We know best. Okay, that, that's pretty much the end of it, isn't it? Ain't nobody going to tell us that our opinion is wrong. If it's wrong, prove that it's wrong. That's our answer, isn't it? But as I said, it's not exclusive to boxing. It happens all over the place. We've got football, with the transfers and the who's the manager and which players are coming in, how much they're getting paid for their weekly salary and their annual salary and how much do the transfer cost. We're all going to have an opinion, okay? It's just part and parcel of being a sports fan. But when it comes to boxing, now I've already given um, some sh um, short stories to my background of trying to be somewhat of a boxer. Not that I ever really tried to be a boxer, I just happened to do it for a little while. Of course, I was quite young. Uh, but the biggest problem that I had was I never really saw myself of having a future in boxing. Therefore, I never had the motivation. Once I was in the gym, I was fine. I could do the training, all that kind of thing. Um, I did feel like I was getting my time wasted by doing sit-ups and did all this kind of stuff. I wanted to go there and punch the crap out of stuff, right? The sparring, everything, that was fun. But I never had the commitment. Just getting me to the gym sometimes from my mum and dad was a bit of a chore, okay? And doing the um, like runs and doing the things outside the gym that you're supposed to do, I didn't really like to do too much. I wanted to goof around with my friends and play football and all that kind of thing. So I never had the commitment. So therefore, I haven't lived the life of a professional boxer. But when it comes to boxing, for the most part, especially in, the, in today's era, I know what I'm looking at. But as I said, I've never claimed to be an expert. But at the same time, if we, if we want to balance things to say how I look at things and how a professional boxer looks at things, especially when it comes to fight predictions and all these kind of things, my prediction rate over the last four years, and I've predicted, what, hundreds, thousands of fights, my prediction rate will be in the high 90 odd percent, wouldn't it? Whereas most, well, not most, but a lot of ex-fighters such as David Hay or uh, Johnny Nelson or Carl Froch and quite a few other ones make hellacious, hellacious predictions, don't they? 
So my prediction rate is actually better than a lot of the so-called experts. I'm not having a go at any of these guys, by the way. But as I said before, I understand. But my argument and my rebuttal on Twitter was quite simple. That, well, if a boxing fan who hasn't lived the life of a, of a professional boxer can't really have an opinion, then if you're not a politician and have a background in politics, who are you to criticise your government? Should you really be able to vote? Who are you to talk about anything political? If you haven't worked in the movie industry, who are you to criticise a certain movie? If you're not a professional footballer or have a background in professional football, who are you to criticise your team or certain players or your manager? Who are you? If you're not a scientist, why are you having an opinion on the pandemic that's currently going on with like COVID and whatever? And we can go on and on and round the circles with you should only be allowed to speak on certain things that you have a background in, that you are a professional in. But yet these very same boxes, and while I understand their point of view, I do, at the same time, they will ask us to buy their pay-per-view, if they're on pay-per-view. They will ask us to buy their tickets. They will ask us to buy their merchandise. They will ask us to support them. But you want us to, to support you, but not have an opinion. You may not like the opinion, and to be a professional boxer nowadays, you need to better handle yourself on social media. You need to be a business person rather than just a guy or girl who puts on gloves and punches things. You need to have a lot more about it. And if you're quite active on social media, you need to have a thick skin because there are a lot of people out there who seem to think that, that they know everything because they watch a couple of videos here, there, here on YouTube, and suddenly they are the expert. Not really thinking that maybe they're the source of their information is probably incorrect or there's a certain narrative sp being spun. As I've said here on YouTube many times that people who upload videos who just do hate after hate after hate, all you're really attracting are like-minded people. Okay, There's too many so-called boxing experts out there who seem to think that because they have a YouTube platform, they're here to change the game. No, not at all. And I've never seen myself that way. Now, I know my platform is bigger than a lot of people's, but I think I'm probably a bit more humble than a lot of other people. Some people get like a thousand subscribers and suddenly they've got a bit of a click following. Suddenly we're making moves. Suddenly we're doing things that other YouTube channels aren't doing. When there's hundreds of channels out there who's been doing it way before you, way before me. And you don't really get innovators here on YouTube anymore. You don't really get them too much. But yeah, a lot of YouTubers will claim to be innovators, single-minded and do things and speak ways that other people aren't doing it. There's only really a handful of innovators when it comes to boxing here on YouTube. You're looking at IFL TV, of course, you're looking at Fight Hype and ES News, uh, just talking about having an opinion on boxing here on YouTube would be like a boxing beats and rhymes. You're talking uh, blood boxing, um, Hatman to a certain extent and that as well. They were kind of like the innovators and of course others as well. Me, I come along years later, so I'm not an innovator at all. So for me to call myself a bo boxing expert will be laughable. But like with most sports, if you talk about sport, if you're a fan of the sport, you're going to have an opinion and your opinion will usually come from somewhere. A lot of my opinions will come from sometimes the comment sections. I'll see certain things, and if I see it often enough, I'll be like, oh yeah, okay, so that, so that makes sense. Then my thought process will change due to a lot of the comments. My thought process could change from watching somebody else's video. Or thoughts could pop into my head that I never really thought of before. But a lot of my thoughts are pretty much, I'm pretty much like a loner when it comes to it. Um, I see things, I see it how I see it. And I don't expect people to necessarily agree with me. And sometimes I like when you don't agree with me on certain things. Because then it creates a bit of a debate. We're talking about boxing. And that's always been the aim. But to go back onto the point of when professional boxers say you shouldn't have an opinion. Well, if what you have done pretty much your entire life is box, then that's what you're an expert in. That's cool. So you shouldn't be talking about anything else or having an opinion on anything else on the planet outside of boxing. That's how I see it. 
Now, I'm not offended by boxers who say this, by the way. I'm just getting my point across, which is everybody is entitled to their opinion. You don't have to like that opinion. You don't have to agree to that opinion. You can sit there and debate with people if you really want to debate with people. I try not to do it too much now. I think I've matured a little bit over the last couple of years. My days are flipping coffee tables over and kicking the crap out of things because I've got worked up over certain situations in boxing. They're pretty much gone. Don't get me wrong, it will come back from time to time. But the point is, everybody is allowed an opinion. If you want me to watch you as a professional boxer and you want me to buy your merchandise, buy your pay-per-view, support you, talk about you in a good way, then take the criticism as well. It's not all roses. It really isn't. That's my thoughts. You drop me yours. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you on the next video.